What is up YouTube? Welcome back, it's Rahul. Today we're going to be continuing our Chilling Rain deck coverage. Uh, two days left of our just overall flood of decks to get you guys into the metagame, get you guys a little bit acquainted with some of these newer cards, some of these older cards, how they've changed a little bit. Overall, I've been really enjoying the Chilling Rain expansion. It's been one of the more fun sets to come out with a lot of cool new mechanics that just kind of changed how the game works. Obviously, the Voltage and some of these other sets did not do anything crazy to the game, but this set has really been uh, very nice at uh, just refreshing the game a little bit and making a lot of decks really viable and making it so there's a lot of strong decks in the format. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, like, subscribe, you know the deal. But today's deck we're going to be going over is Eternatus VMAX. Um, the deck will always have a place in the meta, even with cards like Galarian Moltres. And I'll show you guys why the deck is still very strong. Let's jump into it. So here we are, guys. Eternatus VMAX. Uh, Eternal Zone ability is as long as if all your Pokemon type are Dark type, you can have up to eight Pokemon on the bench, and you can put you can't put non-Dark Pokemon on your bench. So basically, you can use Eternatus to have a bunch of Pokemon on the bench, and use Dread End to have up to 270 damage. Very strong off the bat. You can pretty much one shot anything in the game at the baby stage, including ADP GX with cards like Galarian Zigzagoon to give you 10 extra damage. And then we play a bunch of other fun dark type attackers to kind of get the ball rolling. We obviously play a 4-4 line of Eternatus because we really do need to get that guy up and running as soon as possible. Uh, four copies of Crobat because that's our best card to draw cards in this deck with Dark Asset. Once per turn, we want to draw cards up to six. Um, then we have Galarian Moltres with Dire Flame Wings, uh, which lets us attach Dark Energy from our discard pile to one of our Pokemon. Now Dire Flame Wings is really cool because we can use Energy Switch to get Galarian Moltres to accelerate energy to itself and then switch it to Eternatus and then we're good to go. But also Dire Flame Wings means that we can use Moltres as a secondary attacker and use Aura Burn to go ahead and have like a weird offsetting prize trade instead of using two Eternatus VMAXs. We can go Eternatus VMAX, Galarian Moltres, Galarian Moltres, or Eternatus VMAX, Galarian Moltres, Eternatus VMAX, and kind of have like a weird offsetting prize game, which is really cool, which is something the deck didn't really have before. Two copies of Galarian Zigzagoon because we want to get that 10 damage ping off. Um, we have one copy of Hoopa with Evil Admonition just because there's a lot of decks that have a lot of abilities, so maybe we can punish decks like Shadow Rider Calyrex and get a lot of damage in for one energy um, in the early game. We have one copy of Live Part of E with Hidden Claw. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may discard a Pokemon tool from a Pokemon, yours or your opponent's. Uh, most of the time, it will be our opponent's. I don't really see a reason why we'd remove our own tool, but um, we, we want to be Hidden Clawing something like an Air Balloon, um, a Telescopic Sight, something that's just being really annoying here or there. Uh, so, really good card overall. And then one copy of Evatol, which has, just for a treat, the Clutch and Dural are cool, but I don't really see a reason for it. Also, having Hoopa gives us an answer to Decidueye, so we want to have that uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, besides all that, we have two Energy Switch to Pivot Energies. Again, like I said, we don't need to do that. That's not our critical part of the strategy, but it's really nice to have that. Four copies of Great Ball, uh, one copy of Palpad, uh, three Calm, four Quick Ball, just very basic search. Um, I'm opting to play Reset Stamp in this build because I think Reset's, like, we're going to fall behind. And if we go ahead and do, like, the Eternus Max into Moltres uh, line, they have to go down to one prize a lot of the time. Or if they kill a Crobat on the bench after taking out a Max, they go down to one anyway. So you can go Stamp and kind of stick them. We have a lot of draw because of Crobats. Uh, so, yeah. We have three copies of Switch as well because Pikachu and Zekrom is still a very strong deck in this format. And we have two copies of Kale as well because Path to the Peak is a very harmful stadium for this deck. Path to the Peak makes it so we can limit ourselves to five bench, which really sucks. But a lot of the decks that play Path to the Peak are like Shadow Rider and Ice Rider specifically. And Shadow Rider and Calyrex is already a very, very good matchup. We don't even need our full bench to deal with them. Um, Eternus already has a very strong matchup into that deck so uh that's one of the biggest reasons to be playing eternatus right now yes we are weak into fighting but that's where the rest of the deck comes into play we have three copies of boss's orders one copy of phoebe so we can shred through um decidueyes luke metals that kind of like that kind of stuff um and the pal pad so four copies of research i just opt to go ham here i think having a lot of marnies is cool and all but like i just would like to be doing what i want to be doing as opposed to like sitting here and like disrupting my opponent because i think every deck in this format can kind of do what they want um that's my logic right now, at least. One copy of Air Balloon, just because we have a couple of weird bench guys now, and like putting an Air Balloon here seems pretty cool. Uh, Big Charm is our answer to Galarian Zapdos, because Galarian Zapdos is 170, which means 340, which is a one-shot on Eternatus VMAX, but Big Charm makes it so we go to 370, so getting a Big Charm down on our Eternatus VMAX is very important, so we can within a one-shot from the Galarian Moltres, and um, we can usually use that as a swing turn, unless they play like a Tool Scrapper, or like Tool Jammer, or something like that. Um, 
because Rapid Strike and Talion is still a deck uh, with her Shifu, we want to play Weakness Guard Energies, uh, at least two of them, I think. Um, I want to find room for a spinner, but currently I've been struggling to do so. But otherwise, I think the deck is pretty much solid with the seven darks and the two weakness card energies. We kind of get the point across what we want to do. We get our energies where we want to put them into play. We get to discard and draw a bunch of cards. Overall, the deck is very strong and very linear. Every format has to have one very linear deck or um, it overcomplicates things. You got to have one deck that's just overly powerful and just does what it's supposed to do. We've had Mega Ray in the past. We'll have Ray in the future again. But at the time being, we've got this Eternatus VMAX guy who... Uh, is like the master hand, I guess, from Smash. So we'll jump into some games and see how the deck works out. Game here with the deck. Um, Eternatus has been one of the stronger decks since its release. Um, I think there's never been a question about whether it's top tier or not, even with Rapid Strike or Shifu being one of the more um, powerful decks during the Battle Styles expansion. It has still been proving itself time and time again, um, like without fail. Like it has been coming in clutch over and over, even though people are like, well, this could happen, this could happen. Nope, always somehow finds a way. All right, we're gonna go on quick ball. This could be Luke Metal, and we might've made a mistake here, but um, we're just gonna search our deck real quick. We do have the pal pad. No, we don't have the pal Yeah, we do have the pal pad, okay. Air Balloon is in here. One weakness card is prized. We have three switches. We're good to go. I could quick ball once again, but I think I'm just gonna crow about the first time, because the rest of my hand is pretty good here. I don't really have a reason to play any of these other cards in my hand. I could quick ball next turn for a Crobat before a Sycamore. So we're going to go ahead and pass. This is a pretty strong opener on our part. Yes, opening live part sucks, but um, it is what it is. This is probably ADP Zashin, uh, given all things considered. Uh, ADP has been shifting to a weirder dynamic, where as opposed to going for a lot of bosses, they've been playing all these Glaring Birds, they've been playing all these secondary attackers, where they go for the ADP GX, and then they use cards like Aurora Energy and a bunch of basic energies to kind of um, figure it out. Alright, we're playing against a Bronzong pile of cards, really. Um, there's no other way to describe it, it's like Bronzong plus like a pile of cards. They've got f four abilities in play, um, is this worth putting into play? I don't think so. Uh, basically, this version is weird, because... Um, well, they probably play Moltres, which, or not Moltres, they probably play Zapdos for sure. Like, this is one of those times where I'm like, they almost certainly play Zapdos. And, um, if they can get it off, we're probably in trouble if we don't have the big charm. Because they have infinite healing as well on their bench guys. But if we can knock out this Zacian here this turn, that'd be pretty huge. Um, they might just not play it. Alright, cool, that's a switch, that's pretty good. Great ball comes through. We can just grab this, honestly. I think I'm gonna quick ball for the Crobat. We're gonna draw fresh hand of six. So let's go ahead and grab the Crobat. Now, I'm expecting that we get the knockout here. Um, we're gonna put the 10 on the active just because getting to seven is a much easier number than getting to eight in play. Um, so we'll draw our six. Okay. We have the knockouts. But we don't have a big charm. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and quick ball here. I don't care. I'm just going to calm this back in. I'm doing it this way so I can get an energy onto Glare and Moltres as well in case I need a backup coming up here. Um, because if he does have the Zapdos, we will be in a lot of trouble here. Um, all things considered. Because I did not find the big charm, unfortunately. But we can go ahead and dread end here. Take a knockout. That's a pretty good. That's pretty good to cards. We also have the boss's orders to get this Bronzong if we need to and just make the game tougher on him. Um, we also have a boss's orders to take out another Zashin if we need to. Uh, crushing Hammer. Interesting. What? Not the Dark Energy, huh? That probably means he's got Zapdos, but Zapdos also just gets rid of the energy anyway. So, very weird. I guess if you're crushing hammering the dark, I can just put it onto Moltres, so I guess that also makes sense, but... I need the dark energy to attack, not the weakness guard energy. And you've already bench locked yourself now. Very strange turn of events. I, um, I don't think that was correct. But, uh, I am not the Togekiss Bronzelon player here. Um, 
it looks like they're gonna grab the bronze on probably move up the energy yeah and just go ahead and use max glide probably picking up a card like cheryl here um to heal and do 120 uh, and then they can pivot into this guy next turn which is good for them um, if i top deck an energy or a crobat or a quick ball i could look to make a play um onto this because i think this is the biggest threat coming up or i can just take this out um or i could look for a two shot here there's a lot of plays to make here but i just know that the game plan is probably togekiss into the zasha next turn or in one of these upcoming two turns to make a play um yeah that's that's probably what they're gonna go for here so 120 comes down, Max Glide comes through. They get any two cards in their deck, which means they can grab a card like Bird Keeper Switch in, in tandem with like a Cheryl to completely heal this Tokus VMAX or a Research if their hand is dead. Um, either way, like I said, they do get the knockout with Zashin for the three prizes, um, no matter what I do, how I slice it. So that's pretty much a balls in their court. I have to kind of answer now scenario. Um, okay, Swell is fine. We just kind of prevent any shenanigans and we'll go ahead and research. Um, the crushing hammer actually wow okay that sucks um hmm well v max here i guess i don't like this we are in trouble i completely missed an energy uh, i think we're just going to fetch the other turn and we have to pass unfortunately that's uh, sometimes the crux of not playing spinner or something like that. But the odds were really high that we hit an energy. Um, it just really sucks that we didn't. Um, yeah, it just really sucks that we didn't. Um, that's that's all I can say about that. Like, and we drew both of our other two bosses. Um, yeah, we have pal pad, but um, that's not really enough. I don't I don't know I don't know how to put it. I mean, we're still okay because I have e switches. Um, so I can still knock out this Zashin and put him in a weird situation. Uh, this is a free retreat, this is a free retreat. Okay, reset stamp. He's just putting me down to minus one card, which I don't really understand because I didn't attach for the turn. But now I have my own reset stamp, which is kind of good. I think I'm going to throw the Eternatus up and kind of hope for the best. Because I have E-switches in the deck. And Moltres only does 190, so it's not a big issue here. So we're just going to throw this guy up and hope for the best kind of deal. Um... Give it to me now. Stamp. Boom. Let's accelerate the Dire Flame Wings now before I forget. Research. Okay. This is we're not out of the woods yet, by any means. Great ball. Probably better to grab this guy. Just get another mon into play. Just ping here. The switch doesn't do us any good. Do I want a pal pad here? No, I don't think so. This is just the best odds of hitting the E-switch for two. We did not. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I could switch, but then if I take a beating here, it's not a good thing anyway. If I switch into something like the Zigzagoon here... So, the problem here is whatever I switch into will probably get knocked out based on his hand. But I think this is the best out to switch into in case he doesn't have what he needs. And I go ahead and I, I will be able to give myself free retreat technically with the retreat and have a Dire Flame Wings ability given to me. So, unless he plays, unless he finds like a switch here or like I think he goes switch into a play, then I'm okay because I stamped it rope. Okay, that sucks. Um, he has eggs again, I guess. The part that this that sucks is he can just toe kiss me. Um, and I'm out of stamps now, so I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little bit of a tricky situation because so he can just grab boss, and I think he wins the game off the back of that. So I'm looking for a top deck energy, and if I don't top deck an energy, I think I lose. But he can also just grab boss second Zashin, and I think he's okay, right? Like I think he doesn't lose there. Um. For his two cards off of the max glide and i can't really win the game but if he grabs those two i can just boss up the bronzong and kill it i can grab the bronzong and kill it which i think is the best out now to take out bronzong and then pop had back to boss um which i think is the best um out i have now 
This matchup is tough, actually. Um, I didn't think this would be as hard as it would be, but uh, I guess missing energies for two turns really does suck uh, as a very linear deck. And um, the two cards, you probably grab their boss's orders and something else. Again, we throw up Eternatus blindly and hope for the best. We have no more Crobats in the deck, I believe. Please take your prize card, my opponent. Hmm, yeah. Killing the Bronzong is our best bet, but they could have also just grabbed Boss Bronzong. Um, okay, so we did top pick the energy. We are going to go ahead and boss up the Bronzong. Let's go ahead and pop out back two bosses. And Dread Out. So we did get one piece of the puzzle, but they could have just grabbed the Pokecom potentially um, to grab either the Zacian or the whatever, and they have a boss in hand probably, uh, almost certainly, and that would seal the game. Um... I do find a big charm, which means I get to live a little bit longer, uh, even through Max Glide into Zacian. But I don't have any more stamps, like I said, so if they can just go Max Glide once again, they can just pick up the pieces they need to win the game the next turn. Uh, I'm once again left on a top deck to find boss. If they attach here, the game gets difficult once again, or just a Max Glide. So they probably they probably grabbed a boss, and they probably grabbed Zacian. They didn't even grab a metal, so they're probably going to grab Bronzong now. I'll make a heads up play. Um... If they don't grab Bronzog now, I don't know what they're doing, but I don't really have another play or anything to answer this. They have a bajillion cards in hand. Um, big Charm here, Big Charm here, Research. Um, there's the E-switches that we were looking for so desperately earlier in the game. Let's do this. Let's Great Ball. Um, we can grab the Eve to give ourselves a, I guess, quote-unquote free retreat, even though it's like a little bit late in the game now. And Dreadon. We have no other play we can make. Um, we have the bosses. So, if they play Cheryl, they're probably going to Cheryl here. I mean, the game is probably over. Because they were able to grab two cards they wanted for two turns in a row. So, there it is, Bronzong. And there's probably a boss's orders in the hand to end the game. I would be really shocked if they didn't have that uh, combination of cards. So, the game was really close. Because I haven't even played a boss yet, yeah. The game was really close. Um, unfortunately, we were unable to find an energy for two turns. Which really does stunt the growth. Like, the... the the setup of the stack that crushing him are really really hurt in the early game actually um but i think eternus is still very strong we came we came out of the wire anyway we're about to win the game next turn uh even with a two turn like deficit so let's jump into a game two and i'll kind of kind of show you guys how the deck probably works so let's keep going okay we're going into a second game with the deck um i don't think that that was a sloppy display of how eternus works in the first game i think it's a very realistic display of how eternus works in the first game because a lot of the time uh it is like the uh, when I play Eternatus, I'll always miss everything I need, but when my opponent plays it, they're going to get turn 2, 270 every time, and I can't do anything about it kind of deal, uh, which I think is really funny, because it does happen, but um, it's not like a real thing. Alright, we're up against probably Sandaconda, which I think is just like a terrible matchup, like off the bat. Um, we're just going to swell here, just do what we can. Um, quick ball. Losing a stamp here does kind of hurt against a matchup like this. We're just going to draw a full 6. He gets going to get a nice call for family to get those Sandacondas out. Um, I'll go ahead and pass. I have double E-turn, big charm. I mean, weakness is going to just absolutely destroy us once I find the weakness card energies early enough now. Um, but I can quick ball the Hoopa, draw six, and then have research as well. So weakness card maybe is okay. Inteleons, as well as Glossa Flower. I don't know. What is What are we up against? Okay. It seems like we're up against the theme deck. I have somehow found myself on theme deck ladder. Um, it's okay. I'm also playing a, basically a theme deck. Um, we're going to just research here instead of um, digging as super deep as we need to. Because we already have the knockout here with this. And even talk gives us a pivot we need with switch. Um, very nice. We get the knockout on the Glissa Flower. He missed the energy on turn one. Um, don't, really, don't really know what I'm up against, honestly. But uh, I'm not going to complain. It is a free win. This, uh, who's gonna win? This little squid guy or, um, Master Hand? Rosa. Maybe it's, um, like a Decidueye kind of build. Maybe he's just trying to play, like, Decidueye with the Glossa Flower to kind of have an early game set up. Um, but again, Gormandize and probably Jirachi engines are probably just better. The Rosa engine overall is better, I think, at dealing with this. My girl, Rosa, fire. What is going on? I'm a little bit genuinely scared. Uh, I might need a. I might need to be picked up. 
They have a ton of cards in hand. I don't really know what their objective is here. Um, I have the boss knockout on Oricorio next year, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Drizzle comes through. This should give us a better indication of what they're playing, because they get to actually grab an item. So, I guess we get to kind of see a little bit. Pecom, that gives us no indication of what's going on. Okay. Pecom, what are they coming back? Nine tails, nine temptations. All right, so they have fire energies for Gust. Litwick. Oh, we're up against Chandelure. That's kind of a spicy deck, actually. Now we have a couple options. We can just kill the Chandelure here with the boss. Or we can take out the Oracorio. I think the Oracorio is the better move just because uh, grabbing those prizes is really good. I think, I believe Chandelure does like 80 times the number of fire type Pokemon you discard off the top of your deck. So you use like Orangru and some other cards to put stuff back onto the top, which is kind of cheeky. Um. Maybe I just kill the Litwick. There's only one Litwick in play. I think that's probably just actually better. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Mm -mm. But he gets more cards with this. That's really annoying. Let's go ahead and put this down into play. Anyway. I have to boss this turn, for sure. It's either this or this. Let's take out this, because he probably has another Rosa in hand. So if I knock out this... Then he gets to set up this with candy. If I knock out this, then he gets to... Or if I knock out this, now he gets the plus three plus probably Rosa, which means he can grab two Litwicks onto the board. Um, he promoted the Drizzle very confidently. I don't... What? At the beginning of your turn, if you do this Pokemon from your deck at the beginning... Oh, oh, oh. That is cool. That is very cool. Oh, this is a very cool deck. This is a very cool deck. Wow. I actually really like this synergy. And he can see it. That was um, cool for all five minutes until he scooped. But that is a turn of this, ladies and gentlemen. I set up perfectly on the board. I don't think any deck could have really dealt with me turn two, turn three, with how much damage I was outputting. I could have researched. I could have bossed. I could have basically set up anything I wanted. Eternatus, it's the... Very consistent deck of the format always. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. Uh, until tomorrow, see you guys. Peace.